Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, March 23rd, 2018. What is wrong with this picture? It's springtime and we got another foot of snow. Unfreaking believable. The temperatures are way below normal. It's cloudy every day and it either rains or snows every day. And well, you can see what we got right now. And this snow is not gonna go anywhere for a long time because the temperatures are going to stay well below normal. In today's eBay video, we're going to be discussing quite a few interesting topics. The first one is going to be something to do with sponsored links that is going to make your jaw drop and not in a positive way. I'm going to show you how to determine your exact eBay return percentage. We're going to talk more about sales and of course your comments, questions and concerns from last week's video. So let's get right to it now. We'll start with your comments, questions, and concerns. Crosswalk Larry wrote, as a seller, I leave feedback once a buyer does. I got sick of building up other people's ratings and they not being courteous in return. Get a job replied to him and said, I hear you Crosswalk, but why not? As soon as they pay me, I say A plus good show to the buyer. I understand why you hesitate though, I did for a long time and now the buyers surprise me all the time. They leave me good feedback later after they receive the item or get a reminder from eBay. As far as feedback is concerned, as I told you, I used to leave it almost right away in bulk. I'd wait a week, leave my feedback in bulk. That wasn't working out too good. So now I've just stopped leaving it. I'm doing an experiment and I'm waiting to leave it upon receipt from the buyer. Last week, you may remember I told you my feedback was 11,111. Right now, it's 11,127, which means, do the math, I got 16 positive feedbacks in one week. That's not a lot, but it's more than I usually get, so my little idea seems to be working. Talking about free returns, Skinny Cow wrote, of course eBay loves free returns. eBay is not paying the cost of the returns, the seller is. Best Buy, etc. are limiting returns because they wear the cost of the returns. If eBay was wearing the cost of the returns, you can bet they would oppose free returns in a heartbeat. Also, eBay uses the stick rather than the carrot with sellers. They should have increased the seller TRS from 10% to 20% for sellers who offer free returns, but oh no eBay shows the stick and cuts the TRS to 0% for those who don't offer free returns. It's become blatantly clear eBay's business model is screwing over the last cent out of the sellers, which, sadly, will be a terminal model in the long run for the eBay brand. With regards to local pickup, Gently Love Brands wrote, Hey Joe, thanks for another great video. Something happened in my store this week that immediately made me think of your video advice. I usually sell clothing, but my husband found a nice picnic basket with dishes, and it's heavy. For the first time in my selling on eBay, a buyer sent me a message through eBay asking if I could sell it to them off eBay, and also if they could pick it up because they live close by. I know I could have told them that I could sell it to them on eBay and change the listing to local pickup. The buyer had zero feedback. If I had not been watching your videos, I'm not sure that I would have known what to do in this case. But thanks to your advice, I told them that eBay has a strict policy against doing business off their site and that my own store policy did not include local pickup. I thanked the buyer for stopping by and breathed a sigh of relief. I knew I had dodged a big headache. I still do not accept local pickup and I don't plan on ever doing it. Not for my eBay sales, no way. So I think you did the right thing. Congratulations on that. Mighty Buffoon weighed in on feedback. When I'm a buyer, I will leave feedback immediately after the seller's listing, even if the seller hasn't left me feedback yet. That's my signal to the seller that I'm completely satisfied. 
As a seller, I will not leave feedback for the buyer until I know they are completely satisfied with their purchase from me. Hence, I wait until after they have left me positive feedback, signaling to me that they are satisfied with the item they purchased from me. <coughs> Typically, only 10% of my buyers will leave me feedback, so I don't rush to give them feedback unless they took the time to give me feedback first. Question for you guys. Not as sellers, but as buyers. If you buy something and you receive the item and it's perfect, exactly what you wanted, and the seller has not yet left you positive feedback, do you leave them feedback or do you wait? I'm just curious about that, so comment that below. Just taking an unofficial poll here. St. Paul MN Seller wrote, Joe, real cool, you're at 11,111 in feedback, and I'm at exactly 100 more than you at 11,211. Coincidence? No way. I'm glad you have finally joined the ranks of us reciprocal feedback givers to a buyer's feedback. I'll tell you, man, nothing spurs more comments than the topic of feedback. John Estock wrote, Joe, just got an email tonight from eBay saying that a buyer had my item in their cart. It went on to say lower the price by 5% on these items in the shopper's carts and we'll email them to say their deal just got better. Why should I do that? Is eBay really that desperate? I have gotten those emails too, as have a lot of Facebook members. And oddly enough, the people on Facebook say that those emails are yielding results, whereas they have lowered the prices on those items and the buyers have jumped in and bought them. Conversely, I have tried that myself and it did not yield any extra sales from those items. NYM Arts stated, a woman bought an item nine days later, says she doesn't like it. She'll buy a different item and return the first one in two weeks. Ends up returning both items. Now wants to buy a third item. I suddenly become the item Nazi and told her no more items for you. I put her in my spam box. Couldn't take it. I lost a ton of money on boxes and packing material and wasted material stock in all my time. As far as the shotgun effect of sales we talked about last week, E. Dennis wrote, I've noticed the shotgun effect as long as I've been in sales, almost 30 years. Whether it's a physical store or internet, and it doesn't matter whether the type of store is Hallmark cards, military surplus, jewelry, or whatever, it's feast or famine. I have also noticed that in retail myself, the shotgun effect. I'll go periods of time without a single person coming in, and then three people will come in at one time, totally unrelated to each other. I am happy to report that my eBay sales this week have been excellent. Excellent. Especially the number of sales. The number of sales has gone way, way up for me this week. But I'm noticing most of the items that were sold are cheaper items. A lot of stuff in, let's say, the 30 to $50 range sold this week, as opposed to my higher ticket items. As far as China sellers, Rated R Forever wrote, when it comes to buying from a China seller, I buy from the China sellers all the time and haven't had a single problem. Plus, as a Canadian, the biggest problem now with U.S. sellers is that 95% of U.S. sellers are shipping through the global shipping program, and I absolutely refuse to purchase from any sellers using the GSP, as the GSP equals a scam. Additional cost that I would never pay if a seller shipped directly to me. Well, rate it off forever. Let me explain. I still never buy from China sellers. That's number one. Number two, as far as your complaint with the GSP, I can understand your feeling being in Canada. I am in the GSP. However, I myself am not in the GSP for my Canadian buyers. So if you had bought from me, rated off forever, I would ship directly to you and circumvent the GSP. So you don't have to worry about that. Anybody out there who lives in Canada and is buying from me does not have to worry about that happening. I will ship directly to you and you won't have to pay any extra tariffs. I myself, as a seller, I love the GSP. I sell approximately two or three items per week 
through the GSP and it's usually items that I could never sell domestically. Johnny D wrote, same in the UK, I will block someone if they ask fitchy questions. They're usually setting up a not as described case or simply stupid and very likely want to return the item. If you're doing well on eBay, you have no need to sell to anyone you suspect is an idiot. Block before they buy. Someone else will buy your items in due course. Lady Liberty Stacker wrote, I just found your channel and totally love your content. I'm a new eBay reseller and found your videos helpful when it comes to returns and feedback. I 100% agree with you on when to leave feedback. That's how I've always done it and it's worked great thus far. Thank you and keep me coming. 160 thumbs up. Yes, I've noticed that shotgun effect. Bang, 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 then nothing for a day or two. Well, thankfully I don't go a day or two, but I will go 10 or 12 hours sometimes without a sale. Kat Galan wrote, I'm concerned, Joe. Fitchy buyers ruin the eBay experience by purchasing items and then requesting those items be sent to different addresses saying it's a birthday present for somebody. Has this ever happened to you, Joe? If a Fitchy buyer ever does that to me, I simply cancel the transaction and block the buyer. Bye-bye, Fitchy buyer. I have had people buy my stuff and ask to send to different addresses. Usually they'll say something like, Oh man, I just moved and I forgot to update my address. Will you send it to this new address? And I do. I do send it because I asked through the eBay contact system and knock wood, I've never had a problem. I know that on the eBay end, eBay would always back me up on that kind of thing. On the PayPal end, I'm not 100% sure, but like I said, I've never had a problem with that yet. Paul Antonayak wrote, love your videos. You're the only one on YouTube that takes the time to research and let us know what's happening on eBay. The last comment I'm going to read before we get started with new business is Earl for Dundas. He writes, Fitchy. I thought that was a play on words. Fussy plus bitchy buyer equals fitchy buyer. Nice, but not true. <laughs> Speaking of that, before we get started with some new business, let me have a drink out of the Fox News Cup of Life. Very good. Very, very good. First, I'm going to show you guys how to determine, by the way, if you guys hear a snowblower running in the background, I think my neighbor's got one going, or his service does anyway, isn't that exactly what happened last week at this time? I think so. I'd like to now show you guys how to determine your eBay return percentage. So we're going to go to a quick cutaway and then we'll be right back. It is very easy to find out your return rate percentage on eBay and I'm going to show you how right now. As you can see we're starting out in the seller hub and on the right side here seller level. To the right of that is a little right hand arrow. You will click on that and that'll take you exactly where you want to be. Here it tells me I'm a top rated seller. My transaction defect rate is 0.06 percent. Late shipment rate is the same, 0.06 percent. Cases closed without seller resolution is the same. 0.06% and my tracking uploaded on time is 99.41%. Very good statistics if I do say so myself. Now let's scroll down and let's look at our return rate percentage. And here is our return rate percent, 1.75%. 29 returns out of 1,661 transactions. What I'd like to point out to you guys is that in my case this is not accurate because number one there are people that will return things and circumvent the eBay return system. Quite often it's people who are new to eBay and don't know how to do a return. They'll call me up on the phone say they want to return the item and I'll tell them sure no problem but you have to open up a return request 
and they just don't know how to do it. They plead ignorance. So basically, I take those returns off eBay. Secondly, there are the people that just take it upon themselves to return an item to me without contacting me in any way or without telling me what the problem is. So those also have to be lumped on to this 1.75%. In my opinion, I would say my return rate is closer to 3%, possibly as high as 4%. What I'd like you guys to do when you have a minute is check out your return rate percentage and please type it in the comments section below. Let's get back to the video now. Okay, I think that's pretty easy and straightforward for you guys to determine your percentage of returns on eBay. If you'd be so kind when you get a chance, comment your return percentage as stated by eBay and tell me if you think it's accurate or not or do you actually have more than what's stated as I do. I would now like to talk about sponsored links taking people off eBay. This is nothing new. Some time ago eBay said they were taking away half of our TRS discount and they were going to do away with that. And to be honest with you, I was fine with that. As long as they took those dreaded sponsored links off our listings that take our buyers off eBay. Well I've got something to show you that's going to make your jaw drop. And I would like to thank one of my subscribers who sent me this screen capture, which I'm going to share with you. And I would ask everybody right now to please stop what you're doing. I want you to look at the screen, and I want you to see this. I said stop what you're doing! Stop packing your orders. I can see what you're doing. Stop right now. Everybody stop. Everybody. Look at the screen. I want to show you this cutaway, what's going on. Okay guys, here is a screenshot that one of you good people sent me the other night. As you know, eBay still has promoted listings on its site, taking our buyers away from our items on the platform. But this reaches a new low. eBay is sending people to Amazon. Look right here. Grow your Amazon business. Fully automated sponsored product ads that increase sales and improve return on ads, blah, 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 blah. Grow your Amazon business on eBay. This, I'm sorry, words elude me at this time. Let's get back to the video. Well, guys, what do you think about that? eBay advertising Amazon. I myself am in disbelief. And as I said, that was not on any items I was checking out. That was one of you guys, one of my subscribers who found that and shared it with me the other night. I think it's despicable. I am a huge eBay fan. I don't dispute that for a second, but right is right and fair is fair. I honestly do not know why eBay would want to advertise Amazon, but I can tell you one thing for sure, I don't think Amazon would advertise eBay, do you? As I said earlier, my sales were very good this week, I'm very satisfied, no complaints. I know that there are some people that are saying they are having a dry spell, and those things do happen. However, it does have something to do with the categories you're selling in. There are certain categories that always do well, like collectibles, and I found eBay Motors to be very popular as well because everybody drives a car. However, as I've also said many times, eBay Motors is privy to a lot more returns than let's say your collectibles category. That being said, I'm going to cut this video short this week. So let's do a brief rehash on everything we talked about and I'll let you guys go. Number one. I showed you guys how to determine your return rate percentage on eBay. Please comment your return rate percentage and elaborate on it if you want. <clears throat> Number two, I showed you sponsored links not only taking people off eBay but taking them to Amazon. Just plain disgusting and there's no excuse for it. And I'm going to bring this issue up, don't worry about that. 
Sales have been very good this week. I hope you guys are enjoying the same success as me. I hope you guys are not enjoying the same weather I've got. With this below average temperatures and rain and snow every day, it's just horrible here. Absolutely horrible. I mean, some of you guys think I complain too much about the weather, but if you guys go back to last week, the week after, it's always the same thing. There's no escaping this. As you guys know, I come out here every week and I make these videos to try and help you sell on eBay. If you think I'm doing a good job, please leave me a thumbs up. It tells me you appreciate my work and I'm on the right track. If you don't think I'm doing a good job, please comment in the comment section below what you want me to address next week and I sure will try. If you're a fitchy person, you could leave me a thumbs down and we know who's going to do that, don't we? Remember guys, this is very important. I'm Crazy New York Driver and you're not. Thanks for watching. I am a seller friend, not a seller critic or skeptic of any kind and I'm making money online. Go out there. I hope you guys make a ton of sales this week on eBay. Thanks for watching. Don't be fitchy. Rock on and peace. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>